crucified over a garbage dump outside of Jerusalem. Crying out all the while, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. God is love. And everything God does is in the context of love. And God's commandments are expressions of His love. And God's morality are expressions of His love. And God's directives, God's prohibitions, they are all manifestations of His love. We look at a culture today that has literally gone wild. Gone wild. Turned over to the wickedness of its own heart. And that is true. But any time you hear Christianity spoken of in the media, it's always these these horrible people who want to oppress other people's liberty by telling them what they cannot do. And this horrible God of theirs that says there is a certain way to live and apart from that way, there is nothing but death. That's what our culture hears. That's what the media portrays about Christianity. My dear friend, let me tell you something. I love my two little boys. I love my wife supremely. And I want you to know something. I will tell my little boys when they're going close, close to a flame. No, do not do that. Do not do that. Is it because I want to oppress their freedom? No, I want to save their life. And one of the things that we've got to understand is, yes, God does come to our god godless culture and say, you are all wrong. Every last one of you, you're wrong. But I love you and this is why I'm telling you you're wrong. And you can be right. Well, what do you know, God? I made you. That's what I know. I made you. Don't try to oppress my lifestyle. Oh, I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm trying to save your life. I made you. I know how you work. I know how you can be saved. Well, it goes against everything. Let me tell you something. It went against everything for me. And it went against everything for every other person that's ever been saved. You say, well, I have to renounce this. We all had to renounce something. Because we were all wrong. Now, it might have manifested itself a whole lot of different ways, but all of us were wrong and all of us had to turn and all of us had to say, God, be merciful. All of us. I tell you what, I'd like to take out a full page ad in whatever newspaper there is in this city and just say this. Okay. This is who we want in our church. Every thief, every murderer, every prostitute, every crack addict, every person that's ever done anything so horrible, they don't even want to mention it. We want them in this church. And this is why, because such were some of us. But we have been washed. We have been bought. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we want, church. It's what God desires for us to promote in a godless, loveless world, a true God who is both holy and love, who is both mercy and justice and has been able to show the perfection of both those attributes the day his son died on that tree. I don't care what you've done. I don't care. Because for most of you, I've probably done worse. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've become. Not at all. What you need to understand is your sin and your life could be killing you. Because you're not reconciled with God and you have no relationship with Him and you were made for Him and you will be restless until He finds you. But you have sinned, you have broken every one of His laws and because of that, you're not a victim, you're a criminal. And criminals deserve justice, but God has satisfied justice. And how did He do that? He paid for your sins when His own dear Son died in your place. And yea, He not only died, He rose again from the dead. 
And now he sits at the right hand of God and he is powerful, as the old preacher used to say, he is powerful to save to the uttermost and to the guttermost. He is powerful to save. He will save. He will save. He will save. I think in one place Spurgeon says, I had only two words that I could ever say again. He saves. He saves. He saves. He saves. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to have an invitation if you have any need whatsoever. If you feel like today, you know, you're saying, I need to be saved. Well, come down and talk to us. Walking down this aisle will not save you, but we will know who you are. You come down. We will talk to you. We'll, we'll go off somewhere, whatever you want to do, and just sit and talk. You say, well, I know I'm saved, but my life is messed up. Okay, we're here. We're here. Well, don't you have to go eat? No, we don't have to go eat. We'll stay here all day. What is the need? What is the problem? We're here because there's a mighty God who can, who can save you and who can help you.